How far should one of your dollars go when it comes to getting value out of DLC? This is Barrage. Rocket League recently released a downloadable content pack called Revenge of the Battle Cars. This pack brings back two cars from the game that initially inspired Rocket League. According to the Steam Store page for this DLC, buying it will unlock two of those battle cars, six unique decals for each new battle car, three new paint types, two new wheels, two new rocket boosts, four new toppers, and two new antennas, all of which are purely cosmetic. You can only use one of each of these items at any given time, and the stats that were tracked by the cosmetics you were previously using will not roll over to the new looks. Meanwhile, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth has just received an expansion disturbingly called Afterbirth. Purchasable for $10.99, Afterbirth boasts the following features on its own store page. Over 100 hours of more gameplay, Greed Mode, a new way to play focused on risk and reward, an expanded main game, a new area with a new final boss, daily runs, play a new official run every day, online leaderboards, 10 totally new and awesome challenges, subjective, 1,000 plus new room designs, a monstrously updated weapon combo system, 120 new items, not counting tons of new pickups, chests, pills, bombs, and cards, taking the item count up beyond 500. Alternate soundtrack, tons of new secret transformations. Uh, in The Binding of Isaac, if you get a certain combination of items, your entire character will change and it will gain some properties reflecting the change, and more new achievements. Now, the Rocket League pack is being sold for $4 on Steam, so there's little comparison here. When you examine how far each dollar of your purchase gets you with each of these DLC packs, it's clear that Afterbirth will provide you with much, much more bang for your buck. After all, the Rocket League DLC boils entirely down to a couple of car and topper models, a couple of graphical effects, and different skin modifiers. While Afterbirth radically enhances the Binding of Isaac by not only requiring more skill of players to beat everything it has to offer, but by adding a plethora of methods by which to do it. Incidentally, the reason developer Psyonix is able to do this with Rocket League is because it's been well documented that North American gamers, specifically, are focused more on individuality than the rest of the world. And so, we're willing to pay more for things which make us stand out in a multiplayer environment. Unusual hats in TF2, cosmetics in League of Legends and Dota, and gun customization in Call of Duty and Battlefield all back this concept up. In Binding of Isaac's case, the additions are pure content, because there is no status to be gained by showing off a colorful wig in the multiplayer lobby, since there is no multiplayer beyond the local co-op, where a second player can hop in as a floating fetus to assist the first player. There's two major factors to consider here and why this discrepancy in value exists between the two DLC packs. The first is the workload that's gone into this DLC on the back end. For Rocket League's DLC, there's no balancing to be done, and in the case of the Rocket Boosts, the code is already in place. This is purely graphical, and so the only people who put serious work into this DLC were the visual artists. Even then, the new battle cars are just updated versions of pre-existing vehicles, so they had detailed bases to work off of when designing the cars. Meanwhile, Ed McMillan and Nicalis, who worked on B Binding of Isaac Rebirth together, had the work cut out for them with the expansion. The alternate soundtrack included in the expansion is so good that it almost seems out of place, as it puts the existing soundtrack to shame. The graphics contributors had to create pixel art for all the new items, enemies, and effects, and there are a lot of fluidly animated new adversaries. The new game mode, character, items, and enemies all had to be thoroughly tested for bugs, and Rebirth is not a glitchy game in general, meaning the developers have put a ton of work into internally securing the gameplay from bugs. The other factor to consider is overall popularity. Rocket League has been a rather successful game, with 20,000 people playing at the time of this video. The Binding of Isaac, on the other hand, was an absolute hit. Even as a poorly constructed Flash game in its first iteration, there was enough demand for it that McMillan was able to properly recode and remake it in a better engine in the form of Rebirth, and today, over 50,000 people are playing. I don't know much about the staffing details of how many people worked on Rebirth and Afterbirth, but the numbers suggest that the huge sales of Binding of Isaac enable the developers to price the expansion lower. Much lower, given that if you owned Rebirth, you were able to pre-order Afterbirth at a steep discount. This has been Barrage.